person is also does devotion whoever worship the personal form also does the devotion how is it different when it comes to devotion with respect to impersonalist and for the personalist okay so when we talk about bhakti or devotion so basically it is a path now we can go along a path for a particular purpose or for some other purpose so bhakti there is a, is a path which is followed by personalists and when they follow it the idea is that there is we are worshiping god so that we can be eternally devoted to him so there is a metaphysics there is a understanding of reality that is there in bhakti the understanding is there is the soul the jiva and there is bhagwan and both of these are eternal realities and right now these two eternal realities are disconnected say if the god is here the jiva is here and prakriti is here the jiva is attracted to prakriti and that's why the jiva is bound in the world so bhakti is the process of redirecting our heart from the world toward krishna so we practice bhakti so that there can be a eternal bond of love between the jiva and the lord now in contrast when we talk about impersonalists <coughs> there are two kinds of impersonalists hmm? there are what is called as brahmavadis and mayavadis so the the bhakti understanding which is based largely on the bhagavad gita is that that the ultimate reality god has multiple levels so there is a personal manifestation is bhagwan and there is a all pervading effulgence of that bhagwan called as brahman and the gita's understanding brahmano hi pratishtaham 1426 1427 if you consider is that the bhagwan is the foundation of brahman just like sunlight is founded on the sun so bhagwan is the high, the higher manifestation brahman is the relatively lower manifestation although both are the same ultimate reality so the in the bhakti understanding we want to say if brahman is here bhagwan is the jiva is here the jiva wants to develop a eternal bond with bhagwan and we acknowledge the brahman existence but that's not what we are attracted to now, now the brahmavadis they also acknowledge the existence of bhagwan they also acknowledge the existence of brahman and they consider the brahman to be what is attracting them more so maybe in their understanding you can say brahman is higher and their idea is that they want they may practice bhakti generally the brahmavadis are not supposed to practicing bhakti per se they want to simply merge into the ultimate reality and they are attracted toward brahman they consider the brahman to be higher they want to merge into brahman now in that case even if they see practice bhakti they see bhakti simply as a tools to go to brahman so their goal is not a eternal relationship with god with in his personal manifestation their goal is merging with the ultimate reality this is brahmavad and krishna talks about this in the 12th chapter and he says klesho dikrastesha avyakta asakta chetasa this process itself is very difficult and progress on this process also is difficult because when we focus primarily on the impersonal manifestation so they generally the brahmavadis don't practice bhakti so much because they are attracted toward brahman and yeah bhagwan might be there so then the focusing on something the the brahman it is beyond description by words it is even beyond even conception by the mind avyaktoyam achintyoyam avikaryoyam all those characters are described so so that is very very difficult to focus on and that's why it's very difficult to progress towards it that's brahmavad now mayavad impersonal is what they do is we talk about these three realities the prakriti there is jiva and there is bhagwan now according to mayavadi there is no all these three are maya and the only reality is brahman hmm. now although they acknowledge the only reality is brahman but this they also acknowledge that actually contemplating and achieving brahman is extremely difficult so what they say is we can consider the bhagwan to be like a temporary tool for progressing toward higher reality so bhagwan is here jiva is here so the purpose is to attain brahman but for most people contemplating brahman is extremely difficult so they say let the jiva worship bhagwan 
but over a period of time that person will understand that Bhagawan is simply Maya. So sometimes we say impersonalism means that the Jiva and Bhagawan merge, we become God. But that is actually an oversimplification to the point of distortion of Mayavadi idea. Because the Mayavadi idea is that Bhagawan itself is Maya. So it is not that the Jiva becomes Bhagawan, rather when we become realized, then we understand that Neither Bhagawan exists nor Jiva exists. That actually everything that exists is only Brahman. So the idea is Brahman. So the Jiva is a temporary illusion that has come from Brahman. And Bhagawan is also a temporary illusion that has come from Brahman. But Bhagawan as a temporary illusion can help the Jiva come out of its temporary illusion. So Bhagawan becomes a tool for attaining Brahman. And that from the bhakti perspective is considered offensive because it's one thing to say that I am attracted to Brahman not to Bhagawan that, that is that is a spirit we are individual beings we have free will somebody is attracted that's fine so that Krishna says yes they will attain they will attain the ultimate reality although it, will, it is troublesome in the 12th chapter but this those who say that Brahman itself Bhagawan itself is Maya that Krishna talks about 9.11 and 12 as well as 7.24 the Avajananti Mamurha so he says that is a, it's not just a false understanding, it's a destructive understanding. Moghasha, Mogha Karmano, Moghyana, Chetasa. So they practice bhakti, but for them, they, they, may, they may sing songs about the, about the glorification of God. But their idea is, all this is just in the domain of illusion. And ultimately, God is also an illusion. And I go beyond God to attain oneness with Brahman. So that's why, in terms of their starting conception of what bhakti is meant for and their destination, what they are seeking. Bhakti as conceived by the bhaktas, by the personalists and bhakti as conceived by the impersonalists, the mayavadis is drastically different. Okay. So even the uh, mayavadis also perform bhakti, hmm. so they also exchange some rasas with uh, the form of the Lord. Although they consider the Lord's form as a tool for reaching the Brahma, as you said now. So, how does it differ from the personalist bhakti? Okay, uh, can can they experience rasa? Well, it depends. Uh, Bhaktivana Thakur uh, ta talks about this as Pratibhimba Nama Bhas. That when the sun is rising, initially we see some effulgence in the sky. Mm -hmm. As compared to darkness, that effulgence that rises in the sky, what we call as dawn, that is quite bright. So, that he calls as Nama Bhas. So, like that we can say, when, when our understanding of the divine is manifesting, we are not yet seen the divine, but we see the we see some higher reality. That is like the sunrise. But now somebody may not be even seeing the sunrise. Somebody may see the reflection in water. Now, when they see the reflection, at that time also, that reflection of the rising sun, of the haze that has been created by the rising sun, that, that, that vision is also attractive. But there is no ultimate reality in that vision. So, can there some rasa be experienced? Well, some rasa is experienced. That, is, that, that, that means even a distorted conception of God also has its attractiveness. Distorted conception of the ultimate reality person has its attractiveness. However, that attractiveness is just a very very pale reflection, very small fragment of the attractiveness of God in the ultimate manifestation. So, they don't experience rasa which are, uh, which are central to a lasting relationship. It's like if I am, if I am very faithful to my teacher, and if I am learning karate and I am very faithfully submissive to my teacher, I learn from him. But then eventually I am just waiting for an opportunity to knock out my teacher, murder my teacher and then take up the position of the teacher. There is one thing that a student can become right with the blessing of the teacher. The other is where the, the student considers the teacher to be my enemy. I am submitting right now, but I want to destroy my teacher. That's that's not a very a very healthy basis for a relationship. So that's a provocative example. But the principle is that how can we have really enduring experiences of loving reciprocation 
with an object that we don't consider to be real. With an object we consider that I have to go beyond this object. That's why it's not real rasa. It is just a shadow of a rasa that they experience. The personal is while performing the bhakti, there are different stages of bhakti hmm. to realize uh, a love of Lord. Those stages of the bhakti, uh, like shraddha, sadhu sangha, bhakriya, all these stages. How is it related for an person? I mean, so how does he interpret uh, these stages of bhakti to reach the uh, brahma, ultimate goal for them? It depends. Because this particular anas shraddha, this is something which is given in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. These stages of bhakti are not similarly, the exact stages of bhakti that are talked about in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition are not what is talked about even in the Sri Vaishnava tradition. They have their own trajectory for spiritual growth. So, they, it's a map. It's a map of various stages. And a map can be mapped in different ways. Like if you are going say from Bangalore to Mumbai by road. So, we can have, we can have a path will be broadly the same, but different landmarks may be given. Now, in some ways, of on the journey from material existence to spiritual existence, there are some similarities. So, for example, on the spiritual path and on the, so on the path of uh, personalism and the path of impersonalism. Because even in the path of impersonalism, there is the understanding that one has to become detached from this world, which is the world of Maya, which is the world of illusion. So, in terms of developing detachment from the world and the characteristics associated with detachment from the world and the stages in developing that detachment, there could be significant similarities. But beyond that, whatever is associated with the uh, development of uh, a personal relationship with the Lord and the joy that is experienced in the personal relationship, that will be very different. So, we could say in a broad way, if we use the term, define the terms in a very broad way, Shraddha, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajan, Kriya, Anartha, Nivritti. These four can be similar for personalists and impersonalists. Because they also want Anartha, Nivritti. They also emphasize Sadhu, Sangha. They also will have some Bhajan to do, Bhajan, Kriya to do. But beyond that, there it's mainly what they call as Brahmananda, which is, which is basically the experience of oneness. So then, that Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, Prem, those will not be there. Maybe Nishtha, something similar to Nishtha might be there in their path of experience. But certainly Ruchi, Asakti, Bhava, Prem, the world, those won't be there. Because in their conception, all those are series of illusion. They don't want to get into that illusion. Hmm? Even if somebody says that there is Prema, they may say that there is Prema, but then beyond Prema is Bhukti. They will put Bhukti above that. So, so that is uh, in general because they are destined. Conception and destination are different. So, these stages will not, as understood in the bhakti tradition, won't apply to them. But they may interpret in a particular way and they will put mukti at the top of it. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.